When the Lord restored the fortunes to Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with the shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to those tuning in for just the message online. Psalm 126 as a message or a psalm for, for Lent is kind of an odd choice, especially as the ending of Lent, although maybe not so much as you hear, right? The context of the psalm, a song of ascents. This is, again, one of those songs that you sing with everybody else as you're walking from Tyre or Sidon all the way down to Jerusalem for Passover. So this is a far more sanctified version of 100 bottles of beer. No, it's not pop, it's beer. Ich bin Deutsch, ja. Right? 100 bottles of beer on the wall, right? So we just sing these songs. That's the context for for this uh, this psalm and then the situation in life they're imagining what it's going to be like in the day of Yahweh what it's going to be like when God restores their fortunes now this is actually probably written before the Babylonian captivity but restoring the fortunes to Zion is still something they're interested in because God's made all these promises to them God made promises for a land flowing with milk and honey, and every year that you get a not great harvest, didn't fill his promises. Every year that things just don't work out quite right on the family farm, didn't fulfill all of the promises. Every time we lose a, a little bit of a battle and maybe lose a little territory to our Hittite neighbors, didn't fulfill all the promises. You all carry around your own map, right? You, you remember your map of Michigan, right? There's, there's your map of Michigan. All right, you also carry around with you a map of the ancient world. There you go. See, here's Egypt, and here's Israel, and here's Turkey, right? Super descriptive. The Israelites were promised from the Mediterranean to the Tigris and Euphrates, and from Turkey to Egypt. This is a huge block of land. They never conquered that. They're imagining that day when they own all of that. When the next David comes through and restores all of their fortunes and they get to be a mighty empire. These promises God made. God's got to make good on all the promises that he made. Here's the promise, or here's the problem. All those promises in the Old Testament are contingent, aren't they? I will be your God, you will be my people. If you worship me and me only, then I will give you the land that I promised to give to Abraham. And how'd that work out? If you read Isaiah and Jeremiah, and especially Ezekiel, you find out, oh wait, we didn't keep our promises, and so God doesn't keep his. They're contingent. God actually forbears for a long time until it's just too much. It's just too, too much for him to bear. And as you read Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, you see God finally say, that's it, this covenant I have with you, you haven't kept it in 400 years, I'm done with you. Washing my hands. And the ten tribes are swallowed up in death by the Assyrian army, and the southern two tribes are taken off to Babylon to be disciplined for a time out. It's not God who welches on the deal. It's the Israelites from the get-go. There's a whole lot of Lent in there, isn't there? Right? Remember those baptismal vows? No, none of you remember your baptismal vows, right? Okay, some of you who are adult converts, any adult converts? All right, fantastic. Remember your baptismal vows? When you renounce sin, death, and the devil... The devil, all his works and all of his ways. And then you wake up the next day. Ooh, there's a little sin. And there's a little sin. And there's a little sin. What am I doing? 
Remember our baptismal vows? Remember when we promised that we are God's, that he's named us and we're his? What are we doing? That's exactly like January 3rd. Right? We promised we were going to lose weight. We promised this was the last time we would eat a whole tub of Rocky Road ice cream on our, in our sweatpants while watching whatever it was on TV. And then January 3rd, you look over, and there's an empty carton on the couch. Well, how did that get there? Look at that. My couch is now eating ice cream. There's a very Lenten part where we identify with this, right? God made promises. If you listen to prosperity gospel, if you listen to the TV preachers, God wants to make you filthy rich. God wants your best life now. God wants you to have a jumbo jet with a plasma screen TV inside of it and a hot tub. Just don't land the jumbo jet and you'll be fine. Where's all that? When those fortunes are restored, then I'll finally be happy. That's what we tell ourselves. In Lent, we get an awesome opportunity to have our fortunes restored. To get a little tiny slice of heaven. And no, I don't mean Wednesday night service, although this has been a thing of beauty and a joy forever. Look at all these people here. When you weren't here last year, this has just been great. No, no, a little tiny slice of heaven when you hear you are forgiven. A little tiny slice of heaven when we hear, well done, good and faithful servant, as we come before our God. The entire theme of this psalm, Psalm 126, is filled out with the words, songs of joy this is in verse 2 and then again in verse 5 this is what's going to be happening here on the last day songs of joy i started off lent talking about the songs of joy once we get forgiven on ash wednesday we should be skipping down the aisle and going back out we're so happy this is so amazing look what god did god did a new thing And he keeps doing it over and over and over, this this forgiveness thing. Now at the end of Lent, it's not just skipping in joy because it's the end of Lent. Hallelujah! Songs of joy because God meets us here again. God meets us with forgiveness of sins again. God feeds us with his gospel again. Verse 5 has a very Lenten kind of theme to it too. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy, right? There is a fun little narrative piece in here called a chiasm. That means it makes an X, right? And so, so sow in, in tears, reap songs of joy. You can see the sow and the reap and this, you know, the, the this, that, and the other thing with those two things. But that's Lent. We sow all of our sins out onto the cross, And we reap tears of joy as we hear you're forgiven, you're reconciled, your sins are no more. This is Lent, an opportunity to sow out all of our sins, all of our transgressions, all of the things that hinder us and easily entangle us from Hebrews chapter 12. And to run with perseverance the race that God has set before us. Just like Jesus. To endure the cross that Christ gives to us and scorn the shame that comes with it. We're looking forward to when God renews his promises to us. And it's not just the promises that come with forgiveness of sins. This is the promises of resurrection. The promises that this will not be the end when we die. The promise that we will see our Lord Jesus descending in the clouds and it will be magnificent. I've had more death and dealing with death this this week than I care to remember, than I care to deal with. It's been a bad week already. We look forward to the promises made real, those promises of gospel, 
The promises that tell us this is not the end of the world. The promises that say this, it will be better for a brother or sister in Christ who has gone before us. They have the promise already. We see in Lent, as Lent comes to a close, the Lord of life, high and lifted up on the cross to make good on God's best promise for us. Forgiveness of sins, reconciliation, eternal life. All of those promises are what let us shout for joy on Easter Sunday. They're what we're looking forward to on Sunday when we shout, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Or when we say on Christ, I'm going to say Christmas. On Easter morning, Christ is risen. There we go. There's one Lutheran. We'll try it again. This is a warm-up. Christ is risen. I know the whole Lent thing, the Alleluia thing, it's still true. He's still done it. For me and for you, the celebration of forgiveness of sins continues because we keep repenting because we keep hearing that promise all who are heavy laden or burdened come and i will give you rest rest in peace rest in the gospel rest in the good news that jesus has died for all of your sins We're looking forward to celebrating. But we also get to celebrate every single day because Jesus has filled our mouths with songs of praise because of his great work on the cross, in the grave, and in the empty tomb. Amen.